Good to have Billy and Steph, the children, Carol and Sally, and then it's good to have such as friend, I'm sorry, my name is slipping me, but glad you're here. Good to have Woody here this morning with us. Amen. Glad for all you wonderful home folks. Amen. As I say every Sunday, it wouldn't be church without you. I'm glad that you're here. Good to see Mark too. Amen. With Mark and Matthew and I, I think it was hot and I didn't see him. Amen. Amen. I'm glad he's here as well. Amen. Every one of you. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter number 16. John chapter number 16. And I'll get there in just a moment. Please. But if I could this morning, I'd like to just draw our attention to just a moment of thinking. Amen. How many of you have ever, uh, I know that there's several nurses in here, so you probably have all experienced this, where someone comes back from the brink. You know, that's pretty amazing. And probably all of us in our families can think about our life where someone uh, uh, just was saved from a near catastrophe, an, an accident, a disease that is cured, or a problem that is remedied. And so, I, Heather, you didn't even realize this yesterday when I was going to be preaching, but I was reflecting with you very much yesterday uh, of what God has done in your life. And, and uh, that, that uh, uh, being called to the hospital and your family being there and uh, seeing you not so much externally, but internally so much injury and hearing that experience of that, seeing that and uh, uh, knowing, you know, it's your family and what they're processing and going through and me knowing you for a long time and processing all that information myself, but rejoicing today in knowing that God brought Heather uh, truly back, amen, from, from a, a place where uh, it was, was just catastrophe. And we think about that moment where grace enters in and that moment where darkness becomes light, that moment where sorrow is transformed into this amazing joy, amen. And Really, that's what Easter is about. Where there is that catastrophe, where, where there's that darkness, where there's that sorrow, and then grace steps in, and then all of a sudden, the whole scenery changes, amen, as all of a sudden, light breaks forth, and joy comes, and we see grace, amen, the light is turned on. And so let's look at what Jesus was saying to them in John chapter number 16. Verse number 19. He said, Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask Him. And they said unto Him, Do you inquire among yourselves of that I say, A little while and you shall see me, uh, you, you shall not see me. And again a little while and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour is cut. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your, and your uh, joy no man taketh away from you. Amen. You know what Easter is? Where they saw him taken away. And they were sorrowful. But yet, Sister Jan, Sunday morning comes, the first day of the week, and their sorrow, Sister Dot, is turned into joy. A Sunday school teacher was trying to talk to her children about what the true meaning of Easter was about. And so she asked her, her students, she said, why do we celebrate Easter? And uh, the children's responses uh, didn't please her. They talked about the Easter Bunny. They talked about Easter eggs. They talked about candy uh, and, and so forth and so on. And, and all of a sudden, one little girl raised her hand. It almost looked like, like, looks like, a, in my mind, a little freckle-faced little girl. If you would have heard Lexi yesterday at the Easter party share the Easter story, it was phenomenal. Stop. Talk to her. Let her share with you. It's amazing. 
That little girl raised her hand and she said, I know why we celebrate Easter. Amen. Easter is celebrating Jesus coming forth from the tomb. Amen. And that's why we celebrate Easter. Jesus came forth from the tomb. So the teacher, the, the teacher said to our class, she said, that's right. We celebrate Jesus coming forth from the tomb. She was ecstatic that one of the children got the answer right. And she said, can you tell me why he did that for us? And another little child raised her hand and said, because he wanted to see if he saw a shadow. <laughs> Well, you can imagine the teacher was disappointed. But I need to tell you this morning, Jesus did not come out of the tomb to see a shadow. But He came out of the tomb to bring us from the shadows. Did you hear me this morning? He came from the tomb to bring us from the shadows. So he stepped forth at Easter sunrise. Amen. Night has passed. The day has dawned forever. The shadows of night are chased away. And in, in, in Matthew chapter number 28, the Word of God says, Fear ye not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for He is risen, as He said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, and ye shall see him, lo, as I have told you. If you look at this in different versions and different texts, uh, the angel said, Go and with joy tell that Jesus has resurrected from the grave. The Bible says in Matthew 28, 28, uh, fear and great joy. With fear and great joy, they raced into the city. Amen. A little bit of fear, but a lot of great joy. Easter is this, that we may have some anxieties over things in our life. Amen. But there is a greater joy because we know that our Savior lives. Amen. There is great joy because we know that He lives. There was a little concern, but there was greater gladness. Amen. Jesus, He didn't just appear unto Him once, but He appeared unto Him many times. And every time you see His appearance unto His disciples, unto others, it was they saw Him with joy. Amen. The disciples were gathered together in a room and the windows were closed and they were fastened. The door was locked. But all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. Do you know what? Jesus has a way of showing up. Even when everything seems to be stacked against us that we're not going to see Him, Jesus has a way of showing up. Amen. And like the disciples with great joy, amen, we're joyous when Jesus shows up in our situations. Amen. Later, he showed up to the disciples on, uh, uh, on, on, on uh, Galilee, and they believed not, the Bible says, for joy. Amen. They thought they were living a dream. You know what Jesus does? He brings joy that we can live the dream. And that's what Easter is about, with great joy. Everything in the Old Testament points to a resurrection of Jesus in the New Testament. We see a deliverance from Egypt. We see that, 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 that Israel is delivered from exile. We see David's fugitive years are over. We see Joseph being discovered as being alive. All these point to something greater, and that is to a Savior who would be born into a cruel world. Amen. That they would take his life. But on Easter morning, can I tell you, they couldn't hold him from the grave. Amen. Because he showed power over death and over the grave. Amen. So today, we glory. Glory. Amen. In every obstacle, knowing that God helps us rise above even the obstacles of life. Amen. Easter is showing us that there's hope even when things look dark. Jesus was telling them that, wait a second, it's going to look bad. And you're going to cry. And you're going to sorrow. But it's not going to last forever. It's only going to be momentarily. And when you see the product of me being resurrected from the grave, 
Your sorrow you are going to forget. Just as a mother that travails in having a baby, her, her body is experiencing that pain, but when she sees the face of that baby, she forgets about all that sorrow because her heart is overcome with joy. Do you know what Easter is about? For everyone in here, life can be tough, and life can be difficult, and life can bring us to dark places, and the world can rejoice against us, but God God says you're going to forget it one day because when Jesus shows up on the scene in resurrection power, there is going to be such joy. There may be a little concern there. Amen. There may be a little fear, but it's nothing compared to the joy of a Savior who shows up in all power and all might. So let's look. Let's look at this whole incident of a crucifixion and a burial. But today, we celebrate the resurrection. You see, it isn't always dark when we can't see God. You see, there's been times in our life where there's hurt and there's confusion and there's discouragement. Here was his disciples. It grew dark on that Friday afternoon. I'll refer to it in a little bit. There they were in the darkness. But that was just the beginning of their darkness. It was Friday afternoon. It was Friday night. It was all day Saturday. It was all Saturday night. Remember, we count Friday uh, because uh, the, in the Jewish tradition of their calendar, the next day it doesn't start at midnight, but it starts at sundown. So he's put in the tomb Friday, day number one. Amen. He's, he's there Saturday, day number two. But on day number three, Sunday, or the first day of the week, we celebrate Sunday. Amen. He comes forth from from the tomb. And so it's dark on Friday. The night is dark. And Saturday is dark. And then Saturday night and the Sunday is dark. Amen. But all of a sudden, amen, God shows His power. Have you ever before in your life been in a situation where you say, where is God? Where's God at? Brother and sister, I'll be honest with you. There's been many times in my life, although I serve and I trust God, I wonder where God is in the situation. I don't feel Him. I don't see Him. There's no evidence of His hand working. Amen. I, though I can't trust His hand. Amen. I gotta, uh, though I can't see His hand, I've got to trust His hand. So here it is that, that, that Mary comes uh, to, the, to the tomb and, and uh, we find that she said, tell me where did you put up? Where did you place him? I can't find him. I can't see him. She's disillusioned. She thinks that Jesus is even the gardener because she's so overwhelmed by her situation of not being able to see God. Listen, I don't think we're so different than Mary a lot of times in our life. We can't see God. We wonder where He's at. It's dark. Uh, uh, we're, we're disillusioned by our situation. In fact, it's kind of like we go through all the steps that the disciples went through. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was a fight. Peter cuts off Malchus' ear. So there's that fight. And then after the fight, we find that there's a fright. All the disciples are scared. They're, they're, they're fearful. And then what, what Peter did, but all the other disciples as well, there's not only a fight, there's a, there's a flight, uh, but we, uh, a fright, but there's a, a flight. They, they, they spread out in every direction. Life was really about that. That fight or flight. And oftentimes we find ourselves in flight of things in life. When God can't be seen, we lose our security. Sorrow becomes our constant companion. Fear becomes that one who's a dinner guest every day. See, the world was rejoicing while the disciples were sorrowing. I want you to think about that. Every religious leader, amen, evil seems to have triumphed. So here are the Sadducees, here are some Pharisees. Jesus had warned them all about it. That there's going to be grieving and the world's going to be partying. The world's going to rejoice when you're in a time in your life where you can't see God. Stop. Listen to me for a minute. 
Every one of us has been there when our unsafe family and friends or that agnostic, that atheist person, that one who doesn't trust God, they laugh and they scorn and they mock us because God can't be seen in the middle of our situation. And here we are, and we can't find God and the world is rejoicing. Amen. But I need to tell you, amen, that while they're rejoicing, while we are in our misery, amen, God loves to come on the scene and turn the tables. And that is what Easter is about. The disciples spread apart. Uh, they're in flight mode. They're discouraged. They're mourning. But Jesus is resurrected. Amen. Amen. God is alive. Amen. Know this, that when God can't be seen, God's still working His plan. Amen. You know, there are so many theories about what happened on that Friday afternoon when it was darkness for three hours. On that good Friday. I'm not going to get into all those theories. Because I can't exactly say what happened. But this I know. That when it was dark, God was working. That when the stone was rolled at the tomb, God was working. When the disciples were discouraged and Mary and the other Marys, they were gone in their separate directions and their heart was broken and they were mourning and they felt all alone. I know this, God was working. So when you're in those moments of your life where you wonder where is God, the smiles don't seem to be there, the good fortune don't seem to be there, you're not feeling the revival and the victory the way that you'd really like to, rest assured, God is still working when it is done dark and it is quiet. That's what Easter is about. It's a reminder that God is still working. You can't feel Him, but you can trust Him. When you can't track Him, amen, you can know this, that He has your best interest at His heart. Amen. Know that when you can't see Him, He's still working His plan. Some of you may maybe heard of a woman named Kay Arthur, and she's in her 80s now. And she is a, a writer, she is a speaker, a Christian writer and speaker. And many years ago, in her early 20s, Kay graduated from nursing school. She was a young nurse, and she married a man. She thought she was so much in love, but she struggled because this man was bipolar. Remember in those days, treatment and knowledge wasn't what it is today. And so she struggled so much with this man who, who was a manic depressive and, and she just grew weary with life and she grew weary with him. She was unfaithful to him. And so one day he said to her, he said, uh, why, 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 I'm going to take my life. And she said, go ahead, just take your life. Guess what he did? He took his life. It drove Kay extremely far away feeling like a failure as a wife and as a mother. She said, I remember one day she lifted up her hand and her fist and she said, to hell with you, God! But God was working in the darkness. And God was working in the shadows of confusion and misunderstanding. Can I tell you that when God is quiet, when we can't see God, when we can't feel God, God is working. Amen. It was years later that Kay said this. She realized the how near to the truth it was that Jesus was charging the very gates of hell, reaching and hoping and working for her soul. So there He was working for her. And by grace, He found her. And in the middle of the night, He brought light unto her. Amen. God is working even when He's quiet, even when things are dark. Amen. Amen. We have to believe that the grace of God is working. Amen. God's plan doesn't include temporary joy, but it includes lasting joy. You see, here it was. That momentary sorrow had gripped their hearts. But oh, when Mary, she said, Rapodiah, 
Yes, Mary, it is I. Amen. Why well, seek ye the living among the dead? It is I. Amen. There was a joy that filled her heart. And Brother Al, that joy never left her ever. Amen. She had temporary sorrow. Amen. But all to have temporary sorrow to exchange it for eternal joy. That is what God does. Brother Dennis, you sing that song, it will be worth it all. That little phrase, it says, one glimpse of his dear face will all sorrow, it will erase. Can I tell you that in life we will go through sorrow. There will be difficult times. There will be dark days. There will be days that we'll wonder where God is. Amen. But in the middle of those days, you hold on to God and trust by faith. Amen. That He's going to show up because in the darkness he is working and one day you're going to exchange all those temporary sorrows in for eternal joy it's amazing how things can happen in life there's a lady by the name of Ruth Dillo she experienced sorrow in such a terrible way on February 27, 1991 at the height of Desert Storm Ruth received a call a disturbing message from the Pentagon that her son Clayton Carpenter private first class had stepped on the line on the land mine and was dead can you imagine the sorrow of a mother's heart to know that your son is dead? You'll never touch him. You'll never speak to him. You'll never see him again on this side of eternity. But I need to tell you, she wept and she wept and great was her sorrow. No one could bring her comfort until amazingly, three days later, the phone rang. And when she answered, he said, Hi, Mom. It's me. They were wrong. I'm not dead. All it took was a voice to speak, to bring affirmation and confirmation to a mom's heart. Amen. That her son was alive. Amen. All we need in the middle of our life is to hear a voice of a Savior. Amen. That will speak deep to the depth of our heart and our soul. That will say, I know that you're sorrowing. I know you're going through difficulty. I know life can be dark. It can seem like you're, you're, you're sorrowing while others are rejoicing. But just the voice of Jesus Christ in our heart and our life will take and erase all sorrow and all if we will just listen to his voice. And that is what Easter is about. It's about a voice of a Savior who says, I am alive. A God who's alive in every situation. The resurrection changes things. There was an Armenian doctor named Joseph Hartanan. Joseph Hartanan. He was a professor Students said your name is so difficult because you come from another country, as many uh, as many folks do. They said, would you change your name maybe to Hardwood or Hartman? Would you change it so your name's not so hard to pronounce? And so when one person said that to him, he said, can you tell me the meaning of that name? They said, no. He said, well, let me tell you the meaning of my name. My name may be hard to pronounce. He said, but my name changed on the day that my grandfather got baptized. And my name, heart to men, means this. It means resurrection. He said, so I'm not changing my name because it means something to me. Oh, I need to tell you that Jesus turned sorrows into joy. Amen. When He renamed us and gave us the power of the resurrection in our life. That's what Easter is about. Having the power of the resurrection in our lives.
If Sister Holly would come this morning, you know. Rachel, a well-known conductor, was leading an orchestra. He was leading an orchestra in Handel's Messiah. And as he was leading the orchestra, they were singing the well-known phrase, I know that my Redeemer lives. The choir was singing well, the soloist was singing well, perfect voice, perfect pitch, hit every note, and all of a sudden, the orchestra conductor, Rachel, stopped. She said, stop. He said, stop. He went to the soloist. He said, are you singing that correctly? She said, yes. I'm singing it exactly. He said, I'm not asking, are you singing it correctly? But do you know that your Redeemer lives? And she said, I do. He said that I want you to stop singing it as if you need to sing it on perfect pitch and perfect tune and right on note. He said, I want you to sing it from the depth of your soul and then it will be correct. He stepped back and he began to lead the orchestra and she, she began to sing. And that time she not only sung it appropriately, but she sung it from her soul. I know my Redeemer lives. And that's when it made a difference. I want to ask you this morning. You say it as a believer. It rolls off your tongue very easily. I know that Jesus, He rose from the grave. Is it just something that you have to say because it's who you are and what you believe religiously? Or this morning, are you singing it from the depth of your soul? I know my Redeemer lives. Several weeks ago, I was talking with someone who was diagnosed with a terrible diagnosis and only given a couple of days to live. I was actually talking to them well after the fact, in fact, a few months. And as I was talking to them, they said, the doctor came in crying to me and said, there's nothing else I can do. This person told me, I didn't cry, I didn't feel bad, I just knew that God was going to take care of me. I didn't know if it was going to be on this side of eternity or the other side, but one thing I know is my God lives, and my God will take care of me. In that moment, Brother David, a thousand swords went through my heart as I realized how important it is to live under the knowledge of knowing that God lives. Not just because it's head knowledge, but because it's heart knowledge. In a congregation this size, I know that some of you are feeling in the dark. You may say, it feels like I can't see or I can't feel God right now. But I need to tell you that it may seem like the world is rejoicing. But when God is quiet and things are dark, He is still working. Amen? I'm going to speak that into someone's life by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? That when things are dark, God is still working. When God is quiet, He still has your best interest at His heart. Amen? So your temporary sorrow is soon to be changed for eternal joy. Amen? Because God is working. Amen, John, I'm looking at you this morning, and I know this, and God has worked and moved and changed your life, hasn't He? Amen. He's taken all that stuff from the past, and He's given you 
joy that's unbelievable. Amen. Heather, we were talking yesterday. God has worked and moved in your life. You told me, I don't do drugs anymore. I don't smoke cigarettes. God has worked and moved. So while we were sorrowing, amen, God already saw joy somewhere down the road. Amen. So when we're in darkness, God is working and He's about to bring forth life. Amen. When, 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 when we're in sorrow, He's about to bring forth joy. God knows. God is working. So whatever your situation is, this morning would you trust the resurrected Savior to know that He is working. With that said, with everyone, amen, and I know that there are many, you may say, I might be in darkness. But day number three is about to come. Day number three is about to come. Amen. He told me there would be sorrow for a little bit. But one day, just like a mother who births a child, she ain't going to remember that sorrow because joy is going to overtake it. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that this morning? That's what Easter is about. Amen. Would you gather in with heavy hearts? Even if you feel like you're walking in the darkness, would you say, God, I'm trusting you that you're going to bring forth light? Amen. Gather in this morning. Amen. Come, give it all to our resurrected Savior.